Thank you, everybody, for coming to the Aaron Torres Podcast YouTube page. If you could do me a quick favor, see that little subscribe button at the bottom of your screen? Go ahead, click that subscribe button. Really does help our channel grow, our audience grow, and I really do appreciate it more than you know. So click that subscribe button. Appreciate your support. Now, here's the video that you came here for. Switch gears, and I do want to talk about something that appears to be going on quietly on the college basketball coaching carousel. So it's interesting. Everybody is immersed with the NCAA tournament, as you should be. By the way, you can sign up for the Aaron Torres Pod Bracket Challenge. Link in the show description. Free to sign up. $1,000 in cash prizes. Click the link right there. But this isn't about the Bracket Challenge, even though you should sign up. Um, but everyone's so immersed with the NCAA tournament that obviously behind the scenes, there are a lot of college basketball coaching carousel rumors and moves being made. Well, there is no bigger move that has yet to be made than what could and will eventually happen at the University of Louisville, where Louisville is looking for another head coach after Kenny Payne was fired after the ACC tournament. We have talked a lot about this job. We've talked about Scott Drew. We've talked about Chris Beard. We've talked about Eric Musselman. Some of these guys, like a Chris Beard, are certainly no longer candidates. But I bring it up because on Tuesday morning, I went on social media, ironically to promote that bracket challenge, and I saw the name Dusty May trending. And so I said, hmm, what could this be? I thought I knew what it probably was, but I wanted to search for sure. Well, as it turns out, the reason Dusty May was trending on my social media page was because Tuesday morning you started to see real tangible rumors that this guy is probably in line to be the next head Louisville, next head basketball coach at Louisville. Excuse me. I uh, saw two, three Louisville accounts talking about it. Saw a couple other, uh, you know, local accounts, if you will, maybe that that cover Kentucky basketball discussing it. But I bring it up because it appears as though Dusty May will be the next Louisville basketball head coach. And we will certainly discuss it if and when it becomes official. But I want to now just take a moment and talk about the pluses and minuses and if I think it will work when it obviously becomes official. Now, for starters, obviously, I keep saying the words and the term when it becomes official. Listen, Dusty May's got an NCAA tournament game to coach on Friday. And so bluntly, nothing is going to happen until, frankly, Saturday at the earliest, right? Uh, if they win, then who knows? Maybe at the end of the weekend, Florida Atlantic plays UConn in the second round. I don't want to uh, screw with my Huskies here and, and put any karma into the air. But realistically, Dusty May's week, uh, season will probably be over at the end of the weekend. But at the end of the day, I do believe this rumor, and I will tell you why, this kind of makes sense on a timeline of what we are seeing right now. It is because, you know what the biggest indicator to me is that Dusty May, if he's not the favorite, it is clear that I think that he wants that job. I said this on Saturday on Twitter. Saturday was the first moment in time where it looked like Jake Diebler, the interim head coach at Ohio State, could potentially get the full-time gig. And I said, well, that's great for Jake Diebler. What I can tell you for certain is that Dusty May, at least at one point, was the candidate that Ohio State wanted as its next head coach. And so maybe Jake Diebler was so good that there was no reason to look anywhere other than him. I don't really believe that because while he went, what, seven and two, something like that, there were a lot of great candidates out there. <laughs> but at the same time, excuse me, at the same time, what that move said to me was that Ohio State understood we are not getting Dusty May as our next head coach. We don't want to wait another week. We don't want to go through a national search. We don't want to get rejected by anybody else. And so because of it, Jake Diebler taking the Ohio State job kind of said to me that Dusty May was probably the favorite at Louisville. And so this makes sense. I can I have not yet confirmed it, so I'm not sitting here saying it is definitive, but everything is lining up with Dusty May being the next head coach. And I think the way you have to look at Dusty May as Louisville's head coach is really, it just depends on what you value in your next coach, okay? So for one thing, let me say this. I'm 0 for 2 on the last two Louisville head coaches, so my opinion doesn't really matter on this. I thought Chris Mack was going to be a home run. I remember saying it at the time. I had been around him when he was in the Big East and Savior. And I said, this guy's going to crush it. This is the guy Louisville fans want. 
This is the guy that is going to keep this program uh, at the top of college basketball. That did not happen. Kenny Payne, of course, I liked as well. He has ties to the school. He's a great recruiter. We don't need to relitigate that. So my personal opinion is irrelevant here. But I think how you would look at this potential hire is how you view what Dusty May has done so far. Because on the one hand, the resume, it's pretty good. I'm not going to sit here and say it's great. It's pretty good. Now, to his credit, certainly made the Final Four last year. And there are a lot of great coaches that even currently in college basketball, Eric Musselman, Nate Oates, um, you know, there's a number of other guys that as good as they are, have never been to a Final Four. Brad Underwood, I'm just thinking about names off the top of my head. And so he's got the Final Four under his belt. I think the more interesting stat is that at a place like Florida Atlantic, which literally had no history before he got there, he is now in the midst of his sixth straight winning season. Six straight winning seasons at a school where, if my math is correct, they had five winning seasons in the history of the program. So he built, he developed, he sustained. And the one thing that I think besides the win-loss record that stands out to me, one, he obviously has a great eye for talent. Um, You know, Janelle Davis and uh, Elijah Martin are guys that could potentially play in the NBA. If not, they will certainly be coveted transfers, maybe coming to Louisville. So he's got an eye for talent. But I think even more than that, you know what has really impressed me about, um, about Dusty May? It is the fact that the players who know him and have played for him and have been part of what he is about in his operation, they absolutely adore him. One, all you got to do is look at last offseason. Forget any quotes you've read, any interviews you've read, whatever. Just look at the fact that they went to the Final Four and literally returned the entire team. Everybody's bought into the same cause. Everybody's bought into the greater good, and everybody understands and everybody wants to be a Florida Atlantic Owl. I thought it was really interesting during the offseason. I think it was, uh, again, Elijah Martin and Janelle Davis did an interview with The Athletic, and they said, guys, you had the chance to enter the portal, probably make some real money at a different school. And those guys said, and I, I can't remember if it was those guys exactly, but it was guys on last year's team that could have transferred, gotten more money, decided to stay, And those guys said, look, we stuck with Coach May because everything that Coach May has ever told us has come true. He has never lied to us once. And so he said, look, whatever you're getting offered, you know, if you want to pursue it, go ahead and pursue it. But just know this is how we can help you. This is what we can do. And I will make sure that it gets done. And so the players adore him. He's won uh, pretty consistently. And I do think he deserves a degree of credit for getting Florida Atlantic back to the NCAA tournament in a tougher conference this year than they did last year when they won 30 whatever games at the same time though, like let's, we we also have to call a spade a spade here. Right. And if we're being realistic, what we are looking at is one great season a year ago in conference USA and one very good season in the AAC, but ultimately like there really isn't a ton that makes you say, High level, can't miss all that good stuff. Now, again, to be fair, to be clear, um, you know, Chris Mack had a lot that said that he was going to be can't miss and he wasn't can't miss. So, again, what does Torres actually know? I'm just sharing facts and I'm just sharing opinion based on those facts. But if Dusty May is the head coach, the only way we're going to find out is looking back three, four, five, hopefully 10 years from now and figuring it out ourselves. But what I will say, There isn't a high level of success. And I think that's one thing that has Louisville fans a little concerned is about a a, a stretch of consistency, right? If you get, if you had gone after Chris Beard and I don't know that Josh heard the AD ever was going to. So I'm not saying Chris Beard was the candidate that you passed on or never pursued, but that's a guy that won at the D2 level, at the Juco level, at Little Rock, at Texas Tech, at Texas, at Ole Miss this year. You know there is a level of consistency, multiple places, high major, mid-major, low major, D2, Juco, whatever. Eric Musselman, I know this year was disappointing, but end of day, one at Nevada, one at Arkansas, NCAA tournament runs at both, proving that he can do it at the high major level. Scott Drew obviously was the big name that everybody kind of wrapped their arms around that probably it looks like isn't interested in the job at this point. Yeah, he's only had really one coaching job. That was at Baylor. I think technically he coached at Valpo for a year. 
But Baylor, obviously, it's been consistent for the past 15 to 18 years since he really got it going there in year three, year four after taking over that program. So that's one concern with Dusty May. Is this just a blip where he has some really good players where he evaluated the crap out of those guys and was able to keep them? Or is this something more sustainable? I think what's also interesting, and this is the part, and you just never know, how will he handle the fishbowl environment of being the Louisville basketball coach? And that sounds like a negative. Louisville fans, I promise, cross my heart, hope to die. That is not a negative. That is a positive because that means that you care. The same with Kentucky basketball, same with UConn basketball, the same with um, whatever, uh, UNC, the same with Alabama football, Texas football. You care and you will not accept mediocrity from your program. That's a great thing. But you never know how a guy is going to handle that until he's been in that fire. This is an extreme example. So please understand I'm not comparing him. But it's like you knew Urban Meyer was going to work at Ohio State because it worked at Florida. Like, he only lasted about five, six years, but he understood what it took to win at that level. That is an extreme example. I'm not saying Dusty May is college basketball Urban Meyer, okay? Um, Nick Saban had won at LSU. Nothing that happened at Bama was going to phase him. Um, Calipari, listen, love him or hate him, won at Memphis. That's a pretty high-profile job. Nothing at Kentucky was going to phase him. And you just never know with these guys until they get into that pressure cooker. Louisville, as my buddy Nick Coffey always likes to say, it is the number one college basketball market in the country. More people on average relative to the population watch college basketball on a daily, nightly basis. More people listen to radio talking college basketball than any other city in the country per capita. And so Dusty May... You know, listen, he's carved out this nice little story about he loves Florida Atlantic. He lives right by the beach. He rides his bike to work. That's well and good. He ain't riding your bike. But first of all, I've been to Louisville in the winter. You ain't riding your bike in the winter. But two, that's just not a place where you can just live your life where you're just another guy, where you're just coaching ball. No, you have to be, um, you know, you have to be a, a, a spokesperson, a statesman or whatever term you want to use and that's the only thing that concerns me. And I think that's probably what concerns a lot of other people as well. Louisville is just not the kind of job that you can show up at, uh, you know, November 1st and say, let's let's play basketball. No, no, no. You got to be out in the community. You got to be talking to boosters. You got to be talking to fans. You got to be going to events. And I know he's gotten older. He doesn't do it as much. But listen, Louisville fans, I'm going I'm to talk about that team in blue for a minute. You can hate John Calipari, but he gets it. He's doing those summer camps. He's traveling the state on a on a train. And so I just bring it up. Is Dusty May that personality? I don't know. But then again, what did I say? You certainly couldn't argue that Kenny Payne didn't understand the pressures of the job. Chris Mack lived right across the other side of uh, the border in Cincinnati. He understood that job. So I'll be curious, but everything appears to be trending Dusty May. And like I said, if this becomes official in the next week, if Florida Atlantic is eliminated uh, in the next week or so from the NCAA tournament, we will discuss this more in depth. By the way, if they're not eliminated, it means they beat UConn, which will be a story unto itself. So we'll keep you posted, but it does look like Dusty May is going to be the next head coach, and I will be fascinated to see how it all plays out.